Hey guys, Lucas here and in this video I want to explain how you can find out when and where one of those Starlink satellites will fly by your home and how to spot them. For those who look for shortcuts, just use a website or app like Heavens Above. I will link a list to a couple below. However, if you struggle to understand what this all means or are just curious about what secret knowledge I'm going to share, stay tuned. Welcome at Kenyus.space everybody. These apps and websites usually present some data about a satellite's orbit and there are some very basic things you have to know in order to understand. Don't worry, it's super simple. Should it sound complicated, it's just me not explaining it right. Ok, so you first got to understand and accept that the Earth is a sphere, no matter what some folks on the internet claim. It is a sphere because gravity pulls in all directions equally, which was proven a long time ago with huge pendulums. Given their size and mount distance, you can easily calculate how far apart these two heavy spheres had to be. However, because they attract each other by gravity, they are actually a bit closer than they should, which I exaggerate here. In order to show this is true for every direction, you simply orient them in different ways. Left, right, a bit up and a bit down. The behavior matches exactly what you'd expect if a mass had gravity. So as stuff floats in space, it has to clump up and eventually turn into a spheric shape based on this simple principle. There are some exceptions for very small objects like asteroids, but planets and moons are generally big and heavy enough to be round. So you can argue about why gravity exists and what gravity is, but not that it exists. Anyways, other than pulling in all directions equally, gravity also pulls less at you the further away you move from Earth. It's a bit like a giant magnet, only that gravity has no poles. Everything attracts everything all the time. So gravity pulls in all directions equally and gravity gets weaker the further away you are. There are therefore two ways in order to stay in space and not fall back to Earth. Either you move really far away so that the force gets negligible or, and that's what we do, you move really fast in circles. The same force that makes a car fly off track when you move too fast around a corner keeps a satellite in space and the circle it moves around Earth is called an orbit. This is of course highly sped up. Earth is enormous and it takes more than an hour for a satellite to fly all around Earth. And that explains why most satellites move around and don't just stay fixed in the sky. However, as most things, there are also exceptions to this. Some satellites are indeed fixed, but they still move around Earth. They are just far out where the gravity pulls at just the right rate for them to orbit Earth at exactly the speed Earth rotates. They only appear to be stationary and that's how they are called, stationary or geostationary satellites. That's where you point your sat TV dishes at. Starlink is different because being closer means to offer quicker internet speeds, so you really want them as close as possible. Not too close though, since they otherwise get slowed down by the atmosphere's remnants too much. Alright, 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 so far so good. Now, since Earth is a sphere, we have a problem when we want to showcase such an orbit track on a map. We can't really show all its sides in an image at once. Half of it is always hidden on the other side. So what we do next is to unwrap the sphere like a chocolate candy and flatten it out on screen. Can you see what happens? The orbit that just appeared like a circle is now a wave. It's exactly the same track, but unwrapping and flattening made it look like that. It's what you have to visualize when you see orbit lines on a map. It's always a circle around a sphere, no matter how weird the wave looks. Now that we know that satellites move around Earth really quickly and what these lines are good for, all we have to do is to fire up an app that shows us these lines. I choose the app Heavens Above, but you can use anything you like. The first thing I do is to search a satellite. Just by the way, the ISS is the International Space Station that you can also see flying around Earth in my background animation. You may have noticed that one already. Starlink is actually quite similar to that. So let's go ahead and do a quick search. Whoa, these are many. I pick Starlink Launch 2 since that's the most recent one for me, but they may vary for you guys from the future. I now press and hold it for the menu to pop up and click on Orbit at the top. 
Now that looks familiar. That's the orbital track we just talked about and below are some stats. The period is the time it takes for one full orbit to complete. The height is the current altitude. Perigee and Apogee are the lowest and highest points of the orbit and the inclination is the angle of the so-called orbital plane against the equator. Now before we move on, there is an important thing to note. The stats for this particular orbital plane are not unique. The upcoming Starlink satellites will have similar orbital planes, but they will be shifted around the north-south axis like so. There is a stat missing in this particular app, but it's fine since we have the map and don't have to calculate the flyby ourselves, luckily. One confusing observation on the map you may make is the orbital line does not overlap at the end. That's because Earth actually spins around all the time while the orbit stays the same. You can think of the orbit like a giant spinning wheel, also called gyroscope. As the Earth spins and moves around the Sun, the orbit simply stays in the same orientation. Shown on a map it looks like the orbit is shifting around, but in fact it is the ground that does. So the next thing to talk about is the little guy over there. That's me all the way in Germany. Guten Abend meine Zuschauer. The red outer rim is the important part. That's the region the satellite line has to cross in order for me to see it. The size of that region depends on the altitude of the satellite. The higher it flies, the longer I'm able to see it, so the bigger the area gets. This app accounts for that all by itself. Pretty neat. And the final part to know to become a professional Starlink hunter is the Terminator. No, not Arnold. The Terminator is what astronomers call the region that separates day and night, dusk and dawn pretty much. You can't spot a satellite during the day because the sky is too bright and you can't spot it at night because it has no light. So what we need is a little help of the sun. Just before dusk in the morning or just after dawn in the evening the sky is dark but the satellite flies high enough to still get hit by the sun. That's where the magic happens. Light reflects off the satellite and makes it visible for us here on the ground. So in order to spot a Starlink satellite or any other for that matter, three things have to align. One, the satellite has to cross your region. Two, it has to be early in the morning or late in the evening. And of course, three, the skies have to be clear. If you get a flyby or how it's called in here a pass, you just have to look in the direction from which the satellite is coming. I got lucky this morning at 5.48, but the sky was a total milkshake. However, there was a nice video of such a flyby posted by NASA Spacelight, which I will link below. And to make this whole process less of a pain to plan out, you can see all the upcoming flybys listed in the app under nightly events. You don't have to do any math, just be awake at the right time. Okay. That's it for this episode. If you like this style of video make sure to subscribe and ring the bell if you don't want to miss any. The best thing you can do for me is to also become a Patreon or member here on YouTube. I do this in my free time but would love to get a chance to make this for a living at some point. I'm still far away though and if you want updates on that simply check funding.knews.space. I'm always trying to be as transparent as possible. Auf Wiedersehen, thank you for your support and of course, thank you for watching.